Indonesia withstand the shocks from the markets, given that if you take a look at the rupiah, it's among the worst performing currencies in Asia. If you take a look at the stock market, it's underperforming the rest of Asia compared to rivals like Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines. I think market anticipate about this normalization of the monetary policy in the U.S., but at the same time also probably market concern about the possibility of the implementation of Trump policy to for the tax cut, which is will have an impact on the widening budget deficit and raising interest rate in the U.S. But if you look at in the last in the last couple of months, the position in the stock market for the foreign holders are net sell, also in the bond market, but not much impact on the both on the stock and bond actually. So so I'm not uh, the risk is still there, but I don't think that will be a major risk like what we had in 2013. What do you make of the Indonesian economy? It seems to be stuck at five percent, even though the target is for seven percent growth. Is President Jokowi doing enough to boost growth? Uh, the first one is the impact of this infrastructure development will take some time, probably uh, three to four years before it could, be, uh, could generate economic growth. The second issue, I think the biggest problem for Indonesia is more on the demand side. Yeah, the central bank cut the interest rate several times. Yeah, if you recall, probably eight more times than since eight the times, beginning of right? last year. Uh, eight times, but not, not much impact on the investment. Because the biggest problem is come from the demand side. The question is, uh, what's the point for the business people to expand their production if the demand is not there? So the solution for this is only through the fiscal expansion. But unfortunately, we get a problem, some problem on the fiscal revenue, which is not allow the government to do the fiscal expansion. Is that reflected in loan growth, which is below 10%? basically below historical averages. Correct. So if you look at the loan growth, it's around 7 to 8 percent, even though the interest rate is cut by, by eight times, yeah, almost 200 basis points, but no impact. So I think this is not only unique in Indonesia. The similar problem happens in Japan and also in the U.S. So we need to be more, to have this more aggressive fiscal policy. But unfortunately, because the tax revenue uh, collection is still in problem, uh, we don't have much room to do so. Despite the 8%, or rather, despite the 8 rate cuts, President Jokowi had suggested that he is for further rate cuts. Should Bank Indonesia consider hiking rates instead, given the higher rate environment now? If, if you look at this trend, I don't see much room for Bank Indonesia to cut the rate. Even maybe next year, starting next year, if the ECB start to uh, end the quantitative easing, start tapering, if the U.S. start to continue with this normalization, the consolidation of balance sheet, I think the Bank Indonesia should raise the interest rate. What are the risks to the priorities of President Jokowi? For instance, infrastructure development, alleviation of uh, poverty. Given the current situation, given the current circumstances, what are the risks to his goals? Um, my biggest concern about this is about the issue of the fiscal contingent liabilities. If you look at our debt to GDP, it's less than 30%. But there are some state-owned enterprises who borrow money is quite aggressive. And I think we need to be very careful to make sure that all this process is go through the good governance and also economically feasible and not have an impact on the fiscal issue. But Katip, three years since President Jokowi took office, what's your assessment so far? If you were to grade the president, one to ten, where does he stand? I'll give him seven. You know, the macro stability is there. If you look at the current account deficit under control, inflation subdue, and then he works uh, very hard on this issue of infrastructure, which is something that we need. The only concern is our economic growth is continuous stagnant about 5%.